Hi, we're That Lazy Couple, and today we're going to be talking about what's happening tomorrow. So what's happening tomorrow, Bruno? I don't know, you tell me what's happening tomorrow. So, for those of you who don't know, I'm pretty often pretty trans man. Um, if you don't know what that is, then what have you been doing with your life? Get on with the times, yeah? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we can probably discuss that in another video, but tomorrow I've got my second appointment with uh, the Gender Identity Clinic. And we're going to be discussing, well, Bruno's going to be asking me a few questions and I'm going to be answering them yeah. about um, like feelings and expectations and whatnot. Yeah, so for those who don't know about this, um, depending on how it goes tomorrow, he might start the what is it called hormone replacement therapy yeah which would be testosterone which he's been looking for for a long time now mm -hmm. so <laughs> basically i'll be asking some questions like what does he feel like and what's his expectations towards that mm -hmm. you ready mm -hmm. okay so first question what do you expect of transitioning or starting tea um, there's obviously there's going to be a lot of changes once anyone starts taking any sort of hormones, uh, whether they be male to females or female to males. Um, there's a lot of changes that either take place immediately or gradually. Now the, imme the immediate ones, I'm not talking about the physical ones, like the emotional ones. Uh, and for me transitioning is not a choice it's just something that has to happen okay. um, and like what do you expect of the physical and psychological changes or like what do you want to change first what are you most excited to see the, the change of I mean I know sort of like the the general timeline of what changes happen when and and everything. Um, I'd say the one that I'm excited for the most is the possibility of being able to grow facial hair and to an almost equal extent, extent the, the fact that my voice is going to change dramatically in a pretty short period of time. I mean it starts changing within a month and then it's mm -hmm. very different within say three months and um, that's what I've seen from a lot of trans guys on YouTube that there's been quite a lot of change in their voice and for me I think the two things, the two major things that hold me back and get me misgendered a lot um, is the fact that I have no facial hair or facial hair that I do have is blonde so you can't see it and uh, probably my voice as well although I feel like my voice it's fairly yeah, I deep. Think, I think it's more because you look very, very young. Yeah, yeah, and I think... Because of the facial hair. Yeah, guess. yeah, and I think, you know, I mean, I'm 26, 27 on Sunday. Mm. So, I guess it's not normal. Well, not, I wouldn't say not normal, but I guess it's not... As common. As common for a cis man of my age to not have any visible facial hair. Yeah. And I think in terms of, like, deepness of voices, I think mine's... Obviously, it's not going to be as deep as a cis man's at this moment in time, but hopefully that's going to change. Yeah. And what do you expect of other people's reactions? Like what? Like maybe people you know, or just you know, random people on the street, people you work with. I think that. Let's get this straight. <laughs> Bruna is a lot more excited about this appointment than I am. <laughs> And I think that's because I'm nervous. And I guess, I mean, I haven't really been getting my hopes up, but because I don't want to, because I know if I don't end up going on tea and I'm told it's going to be a year or whatever, it's going to crush me. And uh, so I know Bruno is more excited at, at the appointment at the moment. I'm just too anxious to think about it. Um, so in a way, I think you'll definitely be excited by whatever changes happen, but obviously if I was told, yes, you're going on tea, then 
it would be a different answer to the question. Mm-hmm. Um, but say, for example, if, if I answer the question as if I'm going on tea, then I think my friends would be supportive because I know they know how much of a big deal this is to me. Um, in terms of colleagues, I don't know. I think they would be interested. I know th- they all know I'm, I'm, you know, I was, I'm not stealth at work. I did originally try and be stealth, but it wasn't possible. Um, we can tell that another time. But I think the majority of the people there, you know, they, they, they tend to ask a lot of questions to try and get educated on the subject, which I appreciate, but I know there's a couple of people there that aren't going to understand, mm. and they're certainly not going to understand the the mental strain that it, it puts on a person, I guess, because obviously when you start taking hormones, your the way that you you process emotions radically changes, and that people have to sort of learn how to reprocess those emotions, so I think they're probably not going to understand that aspect. Um, I think people in the street, I think they would end up treating me differently to how they treat me now. I mean, when me and Bruno are walking down the street hand in hand and maybe showing a bit of affection, like a kiss on the cheek here and there, people, I notice people look at us a little bit longer than they would like an obviously cis couple, a cis straight couple. Um, Now, I don't know whether that's just me being paranoid, but it feels like mm. their looks linger on us a little bit more as if they're trying to work out what I am. Yeah, I'll be honest with that, like, I don't tend to pay much attention to... But you're not like, very observant. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I'm not, but I don't tend to really pay attention to what the people, because first, I just don't care. Second, it's none of their business. Um, yeah, yeah. But like, but of course it's none of their business, but it, it obviously affects, as, as a trans person, yeah, you're obviously going to be paranoid as to that. how... Yeah, yeah, and you're going to be more yeah. paranoid as to how people see you, and... You know, even if they look at you a split second longer than you're comfortable with, it obviously they, they could just be sort of like gazing off into space and daydreaming what they're going to have for lunch. But for me, and I, I'm maybe obviously stereotyping, but for maybe other trans people as well, there's that, there's that feeling in the back of your mind like, fuck, do they know that I'm trans? Mm. Like, can they tell that easily? Like, what is it? And, and it starts feeling really uncomfortable. Yeah, and it's not just them knowing you're trans, it's like they're, like, the prejudice, prejudice yeah. that comes with it. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Because mm. we can say what we like, you know, we are in 2017 and where we live, London, is a very liberal area compared to a hell of a lot of other places, you know, in the world, but it's we're still nowhere near where we need to be. And I'm saying that as a, as a human race, as a species, but also as a member of the trans community, we are nowhere near where we need to be in terms of visibility and acceptance. So obviously, like I said, you're going to have some, not only the physical changes, which are going to be more visible, obviously, because mm-hmm. it's physical, but you're going to have some um, emotional, you know, thought process changes. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think of that? Like how... Like, how do you feel that's going to go? And also, how do you think that our relationship is going to change or not change because of that? Um, so, I think the the first change will definitely be emotional, I think. Obviously, from the moment I get told, if I get told that I'm going on testosterone, then I can't. I just can't think about it right now because it feels like it could easily be one of the best things that could ever happen to me. Yeah, either way, it's going to be a very emotional day. Like yeah. Either. Because, like I said, it, if out. if it doesn't happen, then I'm gonna be crushed. And if it did, if it does happen, then <laughs> yeah, but. It's more about the changes, what do you think? Like, it's like... But, yeah, assuming I mean, that if, if, if I do go on tea, then obviously I'm going to be ecstatic, excited, happy, over the moon, every single thing that you can think of, it will be that. And I think that will make, like, a big difference to my confidence, maybe, because then I'll think, you know, I'm finally getting somewhere. You know, I'm, this change is now underway. I'm no longer pre-tea. 
Like, there's nothing wrong with being pretty, don't get me wrong. People choose to transition, people choose to take testosterone, people choose not to. That's up to you, that's none of my business whatsoever. But for me, for my own personal well-being, my own personal comfort with myself, I have to take tea. Mm. I don't think at this moment in time that I could get the results that I want and be the person or be on the outside, the person that I feel I am on the inside without testosterone. So for me it's like, it's like this, it's not a miracle drug, don't get me wrong, it, it doesn't solve your problems, but it would make a huge difference to my self-esteem and a huge difference to my confidence to the point where I won't have in the back of my head so much that the feeling that I'm stagnating, yeah. the feeling that I'm stuck in the same place. And like I say, if you don't choose to test take testosterone or or you know the any HRT or any other medicinal um, transition, even if you yeah, if you choose no you surgery, that's up to trans, you. That is yeah, your business. Yeah. That doesn't make you any more or less transgender than mm. I am. We all transgender. We're just different. These people are different yeah. but th these changes that they're gonna happen like if you yeah team, um do you think how do you think they're gonna change you like personally like your um, personality and how that's gonna affect our relationship i think in fairness i think once i'm on tea or like i said it'll make a big boost to my confidence and my self-esteem um and i think that will steadily build as the physical changes happen yeah. i think the emotional changes will definitely come from the word go the physical changes will take a little bit of time and a lot of the changes will take years so it's it's like it's, it's basically yeah and it's it's like having a second puberty so if you imagine you don't wake up one day at 12 years old and you've got a full beard or you don't wake up at 12 years old and you've got your breasts fully developed your hips fully developed everything it doesn't happen like that you just don't just work wake up and things are there when they weren't there before it's a really slow process and I appreciate that but even starting the process when for me even starting the process is miles away from where I am now mm -hmm. and the physical changes that take place will help to bring up my confidence bring up my self-esteem and make me feel more aligned on the mm. inside and out I will no longer feel like there's a wedge there that there's two different people in me mm -hmm. and I feel like people would definitely treat me differently because I get misgendered a hell of a lot for stupid things like <laughs> pretty much every time we go out into the shop and we have to talk to people or we go into a shop and they come up to you and they say oh how can we help you no it's how can we help you ladies which I really, really don't understand. Like, like I guess I do for it in a way, but still, like, why? Yeah, and mm. it's that yeah. sort of stuff that gets to me, especially when right. there's nothing that I can do. It's outside of my control. You know, outside of sticking a neon sign over my head saying I'm a man, there's nothing I can do. Mm. Um, in terms of personal relationships, um... I think it would be naive of me to say that my personal relationships will not change because I know that a lot of trans men, when they go on testosterone, they seem to find it harder to process their emotions. Now, I'm not the best processor of emotions, <laughs> which you would agree. <laughs> so, I'm pretty sure it will probably be a rocky ride. It will be like a roller coaster ride. And I know there will be times when Bruna's sick of me. As and I am normally, <laughs> so okay, go on. And I know there's times that I'll get on her nerves, I know there's times that maybe I'll let my emotions get the better of me, and it might happen more often than it does now. Mm. Um, so that's something that we're going to have to take day by day. Yeah. And I know that she supports me with everything she th that she has, like, it's not an issue, like, doesn't come into it. But... I think it'd be naive to say that nothing's gonna happen mm. um, but I feel like we're fairly strong people independently 
and even stronger together. And I think we're old enough and mature enough to talk things through yeah. rather than waste the time that we've been together over silly little things. Now, it's the last question, and this is a question that I already know the answer, but I know that a lot of people who maybe don't know transgender people never had the opportunity to meet someone and learn more from them. This is a question that loads of people will ask you and or have asked you before. Are you afraid of regretting it? No. No. There is literally not even a 1% chance there's not even you know those little thoughts that you get in the back of your head when you're say you're in a shop and you've got a choice between two meals to make for dinner and both of them sound really nice but you don't want to make the wrong decision because then you'll end up regretting it for the rest of the night and you'll be sat there going I wish I'd made this one instead I know that's a really weird analogy <laughs> and it really simplifies it but there is not even the tiniest remote thought in the back of my head to think that one day I might wake up or maybe it's a gradual thing that maybe one day I won't want to be the person I thought that I want to be because like I say I'm almost 27 I've felt this way since I can first remember one of my first ever memories is realizing the huge disjoint between who I am inside to how I am on the outside and how people perceive me and perceive my gender from looking at me and it's affected me for all of my life I can't see that changing mm -hmm. I don't I can't the only way I can see that changing is once I've transitioned and become at one the the outside me the way people perceive me and view me and the way I view myself and the way I view how I see myself and the way I feel on the inside until they're at one then that's not going to change that is yeah. the only way that like, would change as, as human beings of course there is always like a bit of fear of regret but like in this situation I think all that you've been through and that you mm. feel and that you are is like much higher than this fear you know what I mean? It's yeah. not like, oh, maybe I'll regret doing this. It's like, because doing this will have, like, obvious consequences. Mm. And then you never know if that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing. With, like, with everything. Well, don't, don't get me wrong. Being transgender has had a huge amount of consequences for me in the past. Like, anyway. when I've <laughs> come out to people, I'm no longer that person to them anymore. Like, I've had friends who have abandoned me purely because of how I see myself just because I see myself as a man and not a woman which seems like such a an arbitrary concept mm. of how, do you know what I mean it just sounds so weird to give up a long-term friendship over something that literally has none of their damn business and I've lost don't get me wrong like I've been in relationships with girls and then when I've told them that, well, I've told them I'm transgender from the outset, but when I've sort of expressed thoughts that I want to transition, their response has been, we have to break up then because I'm a lesbian. To which my response was, why bitch? <laughs> anyway. And then there's losing family members. The people who are really supposed to be the people that you call home. And support you the most. And support you, no matter what, unless I'm a serial killer. Fair enough. But they're meant to be the people who unconditionally love and support you. And they weren't. So, no regrets? I would say the only regret that I can think of myself having in the future is obviously, like medical, science, knowledge, technology, materials, and everything advances a ridiculous rate like every day there's new discoveries in the science world in the medicine world in technology and the only thing like if I was if I think of myself as a post-op person who's completed their transition like all the surgeries that I would like to get 
all the treatments, all of the everything sort of thing. The only thing I can think of myself regretting is maybe waiting a little bit longer until another advance comes along so that we can do more than we can do now mm. to make us more at the same sort of I don't want to say standard because then that makes cis men sound better than us they're not we do it better but anyway that puts us, us at the same comparable anat an anatomical structure I mean obviously you can't change your genes at this moment in time but with technology and medicine being able to advance maybe we'll be able to do things with our anatomy that cis men can that we can't currently do yeah um maybe we can do an extra video talking about all the surgeries that are available at the moment yeah um. that's where we're at at the moment and um if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you've got any comments to make maybe about um yourself being a transgender person and your experience or a friend of yours or somebody you know who's transgender and their experience or your experience as an ally or as a friend as maybe someone who doesn't quite understand if you're looking out maybe to find out some information to make yourself mm. more knowledgeable on the subject leave yeah, a comment feel in free the... to ask us anything that you're interested yeah i mean i'm i'm a pretty open person you can ask yeah. me as a, as a transgender man or you can ask bruna as a cisgender ally for transgender people mm. and um and Just hopefully feel free. we're gonna have good news tomorrow. Well, we'll see. And we'll probably do a second video if it all goes well. If we mm. don't have a second video, then <laughs> then you know mm. it's gone bad. Yeah. Because no. I don't drink, so it's not like I'm gonna be out celebrating getting drunk because I don't drink. No. So. But yeah, hopefully we'll let you know. We'll Fingers crossed, and see you next time. <laughs> yeah.